Okay, it's time now for a look at the day's business news. And we're going to start with Europe's largest bank, which is seeing a decline in its profits. To tell us more, we're joined on set by Cole Stangler. Cole, this does not sound like a good story. That's right. HSBC has released its quarterly earnings and they've fallen well short of expectations. Now, the bank reported that pre-tax profits fell by some 18% compared to last year. It's, unlike, it's likely to fuel uncertainty at the lender, which replaced its CEO in August. Now, while many feared that protests in Hong Kong would hurt the bank's bottom line, HSBC's losses stem largely from its performance in continental Europe. Georgina Robertson has this report. It's Europe's largest bank, a household name. Employing nearly a quarter of a million people worldwide, HSBC was quick to comment on its disappointing results, labelling its performance as not acceptable, principally business activities within continental Europe, the UK and the US. HSBC is headquartered in London, but it earns most of its profits in Asia. The bank has been navigating uncertainty with ongoing unrest in Hong Kong and US-China trade tensions. But here, the bank's performance has held up. In fact, its pre-tax profit for the Asian region rose 4% from last year. Europe is a different story. Economic uncertainty, with Brexit still unfolding, HSBC has already started rolling out a plan to cut 10,000 jobs. The company's statement, however, made clear that the plans were no longer enough and that they would be accelerating their remodel. These results are the first to be announced under the interim chief executive, Noel Quinn. He started the job in August after the quick departure of his predecessor, John Flint, after only 18 months in the role. Quinn has reportedly said he hopes to be more than just a caretaker CEO. He is in the running to secure the top job and looking to impress shareholders and improve profits with a more aggressive plan. Let's take a look now at the day's trading action. Gains on the major Asian markets to kick off the week. That's amid optimism the U.S. and China may put their so-called mini-deal into writing, cooling their trade war. Now, the Nikkei finished the day up about 0.3%, as you can see here. The Shanghai Composite seeing gains. Gains on the Kospi as well. And the Hang Seng in Hong Kong up eight-tenths of a percent. Now, that's despite losses from HSBC, as we just saw. Its shares down nearly 3%. Now, European markets are off to a more mixed start, with shares trading just around the flat line here. Cacaron trading just under, the Frankfurt DAX seeing just above the flat line. Meanwhile, the FTSE in London down 0.23%, down excuse me there. Take a look now at the pound, which has fluctuated a lot, as we've seen with that Brexit uncertainty. It's holding relatively steady today, trading around $1.28. It's ahead of a crucial EU meeting this morning, another high-stakes vote coming up in British Parliament. Now, French luxury giant LVMH has made an offer to purchase U.S. jewelry maker Tiffany. The proposal amounts to some $14.5 billion. Chaired by France's richest man, Bernard Arnault, LVMH is the world's largest luxury group by sales. and will be hoping to add Tiffany to its extensive portfolio, which includes names like Dior, Louis Vuitton, and Sephora. The offer comes, meanwhile, as Tiffany fights a slump in sales on its end. Feeling the effects of the slowdown in China's economy, though this morning LMBH has finally responded to reports of that offer. It's stressed that there's no certainty talks will result in a deal. Meanwhile, the labor woes continue at France's state rail company. Strikes today are expected to severely affect operations on a major line that runs through the country's west. With only three out of every ten trains running, according to reports, comes amid a deeper malaise over working conditions at the SNCF and on the heels of strikes that rail workers pin on safety concerns. Last year, reforms eliminated rail workers' special job protections, and this year the government is preparing to unveil new retirement reforms that could see further cutbacks. It's all a source of anxiety for unions who say they're ready to push back. Take a listen. I have colleagues who have been through seven or eight restructurings, who had their job shifted, who had a job that management got rid of. All of this to say, at a certain point, rail workers feel disrespected. Feel dis and finally, a giant step for Virgin Galactic. Space tourism venture led by Richard Branson is making its debut later today on the New York Stock Exchange. Valued at $1.5 billion, the firm hopes to be the first to send fee-paying customers into space. Though it's a crowded field with fellow billionaires Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos launching their own ventures to do the same. Either way, Virgin Galactic has an ambitious time frame. They hope to make 16 trips to space as early as next year, though Eve, it will cost you if you're interested. The average ticket on one of these trips around $250,000. But I hear you get to keep the spacesuit that, you, that you're given for the trip. Is it really worth <laughs> it? Totally worth it. <laughs> Cole Stangler, thanks a lot for that business update.